Okay, so today I'm going to introduce you uh, the chaos engineering and what is chaos engineering and what kind of systems that uh, we need to use chaos engineering. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move ahead. So you know that uh, current day software development is uh, far more complex and it is much more fast uh, paced compared into old school uh, software development. So what we are doing today is, you know, we are doing very rapid development and deployment, especially, you know, with automated uh, CI/CD pipelines and uh, containerized uh, deployments and all that. Everything is very fast today. I mean, the time that it takes uh, any particular code segment uh, going from a developer's machine to the production container, to the production environment is very short now. You know that in earlier days what we used to do is, you know, we, I mean, we used to have like monthly releases or quarterly releases or, you know, we hardly do any releases uh, in old day school. But right now there are certain companies that who are doing production releases or ship their code into the production maybe like 100 times or 200, 300 times per day. So that is the world that we are living in right now. Okay, so let's so, uh, move ahead and see uh, what what would be the kind of like you know a traditional uh, deployment architecture. You know, in in old days that we used to have a lot of monoliths. So this is more or less uh, a monolithic architecture or deployment architecture diagram. We have our web server here and we have application server, uh, which is uh, you know which runs uh, Java applications in Java files and all that. And uh, you know most of the applications do connect to a database server, so that is there. And some devices are getting connected and all that. So now let's uh, go ahead and see uh, what uh, you know. What is the diagram or, de or deployment diagram that uh, uh, a modern day uh, application is? So uh, this is the uh, Netflix's uh, uh, deployment diagram. Uh, so you know that Netflix is using a lot of services uh, as in uh, distributed architecture. So they are using a lot of microservices and all that. You can see that, you know, there might be like tens or thousands or millions of uh, services uh, which runs independently. Uh, and, you know, each uh, of these services need to uh, get communicated with each other. So if you are trying to diagram uh, this kind of an architecture, this is uh, uh, what you would end up. You can see that it is very complex and you can say that it's a bit chaotic as well. So everything is going well uh, in this uh, kind of an architecture. Uh, until uh, you know you are getting errors because you know in a distributed architecture like this or, or a microservices based architecture like this you know once you get an error it is a bit hard to diagnose it so I mean of course that you have you know this observability and tracing tools and all that to remedy it but you know, if you take it as a general it would be difficult and once uh, you know if one particular area or segment get failed you know it is going to affect to many other areas as well. So, uh, you know, the, the real chaos starts in here because, you know, the, uh, the, the application stops working, certain areas are not in the application stop uh, working and all that. So then uh, what would happen? You know, that uh, every team or the, you know, uh, mainly the support team is the uh, normally that who comes into the rescue first of all. And then once they cannot do it, it goes into the DevOps team and, you know, by, you know, within a few hours time, the whole uh, technical team is, uh, you know, trying to uh, resolve these problems. So now uh, the thing is that can we do this every day? Of course we cannot because, you know, developers and DevOps guys, they, I mean, they have a lot of other work to do. They need to develop uh, their software. They need to, you know, come up with a new feature and all that. So we cannot do this thing every day. Uh, what so we can do about this? So uh, as a resolution, what we can, one thing that we can try it out is we can reproduce the production scenarios like, you know, almost all production scenarios that can encounter in a pre-prod or staging environment. I know that, you know, this is kind of like, you know, it is like, shoot, I mean, uh, you know, shooting to the moon because it's very hard to predict uh, all the production scenarios that can occur. And uh, so even though that we even, we have been able to get it done, uh, we are, ne we need to tackle three, mainly three kind of problems that are the known events and expected conceivable. So uh, these things are mainly uh, the QA work that we are talking about here. And the other type is unknown events and unexpected consequences. And the, uh, the most difficult part is unknown events and unexpected consequences. So when it comes to uh, chaos engineering, mainly we are focusing on 
these last two categories. So you may ask a question, why need to deal with unknowns? Because you know that way, you, I mean, you are the one who's building this particular software and why we are talking about these unknowns? Because the reason is, most of the modern day software are complex systems. So uh, mainly we can categorize systems into two categories, the, uh, the complex systems and the simple systems. But uh, unfortunately, most of the modern day software because of you know because of the fact that we are dealing with a lot of data and we are dealing with uh, complex requirements and all that so because of all these facts most of the modern software are complex systems so now let's examine uh, the difference between simple systems and complex systems so simple systems are more or less linear systems so that what does that mean so it means that uh, whenever that you are doing any change to a, uh, any system or a simple system that the effect uh, that particular change is made to that system is linear. So in complex system, unlike simple systems, the change that you are going to make would affect in an exponential way in the complex system. So as an example, we can give, a, give the bull whip effect. So you know that if you take a bull whip and if you uh, just make a small hand movement, at the end of the bullwhip, you can break the sound barrier. So that means that even with the small change, you can take a huge uh, change or it is affecting in a big way at the end or to the system. And uh, in all simple systems, the output is predictable. So that means that you can predict the behavior of the system before you go into the production. But in complex systems, uh, the, prediction, uh, the behavior is unpredictable. You, don't, you do not know how it would behave. So simple systems are comprehensible. That means that you can build uh, a mental model of that particular system without any uh, effort. So I mean that means that you know how the system works can be modeled uh, in a single uh, human mind or you know for an average person he, he can know, he can build a mental model. But complex systems are not like that. You cannot think or you cannot build a simple uh, mental model or a complete mental model uh, in a complex system. So those are the main differences. There is another a nice framework uh, that uh, you can define a complex system. So that is called the dynamic safety model. So in every complex system, it has mainly, uh, it, I mean, you need to negotiate main three components. Those are the, that is the economics, the workload and the safety. So you can assume that uh, all these uh, three components are tied together using a rubber band. So if you are talking about economics, as an example, uh, being a, I mean, being developed uh, complex system, you cannot, or you cannot ask your management to deploy, okay, I want to deploy this particular system. So in order to do the deployment, I want to have 100,000 uh, AWS uh, virtual machines. Because you know the, the, the budget won't fit in. Right? So as an example, so you need to balance all these three aspects in the uh, central point when you are dealing with the complex system. As, an, as another example, you cannot compromise safety because of the budget and the workload for your development team and your technical teams. So uh, this is a nice model that you can uh, navigate a complex system. If you are developing a complex system, you need to uh, deal with this dark depths as well. So what are the dark depths in a complex system? So the first one is anomalies that it generates can lead into total system failure. Even a single very really small uh, anomaly can lead into a total system failure. And uh, the other aspect is that failures cannot be recognized during the design time. Otherwise, you know, uh, developers or QA uh, team could have identified and fixed it. And uh, of course, that complex systems are generate anomalies and there are no countermeasures. There are no specific countermeasures for these anomalies. So that's why that you need to employ a technique such as uh, chaos engineering into complex systems. So how we can evaluate a complex system? Right, okay, now we know we have these uh, problems in a complex system, how we can evaluate? So what we can, the best thing that you can do is try to create a troublesome turbulence condition in a controlled environment and inspect the outcome. So you can 
create this uh, troublesome turbulence condition in a controlled environment. So controlled environment means that you know this, this is called the reducing the blast radius. So you are controlling uh, the effect that, uh, that, that particular turbulence that you are going to create and you are inspecting the outcome. So let us see how we can do this thing. So one good example that I can give you is uh, you know that uh, as of this recording we are suffering from this uh, pandemic this uh, COVID-19. So uh, as a remedy, you are taking the vaccine. So what, what does this vaccine contain? It contains the mild version of that particular virus. So it is injecting it into your body and it triggers your immune system. So what you are doing actually into your, inside your body, you are creating a troublesome uh, or turbulence condition in a controlled environment inside your body. So when the real virus is trying to come and attack you now your body knows how to react to this particular condition because it knows how this virus behaves through this vaccine so this is a nice example you know from the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, events that uh, i can give you about uh, this. so what is chaos engineering so this is kind of like you know fo a formal definition in chaos engineering so uh, the main aspects uh, in this definition is experimenting on a distributed system and guys mind you that you know most of these uh, complex systems that we are talking about here are distributed systems. If it is, I mean, almost all the most of the distributed systems are complex systems. So experiment in distributed system and build confidence in production environment. So you are creating some chaos uh, in uh, as an experiment and you build the, uh, the confidence of your system in the production environment. So let's see how we can do it. Process, the first step is to define the steady state. So you, in your complex system, you want to define the steady state. So it, this can be like, you know, uh, how the system is behaving for number of users and all that. Right? And the other thing is that continuous steady state in both experimental and control groups. So you, can, you have to have like uh, two groups. The one is the experimental group and the control group. And uh, introduce the variables that reflects real world events. So what are these real world events, you know? What can happen in the real world production system? There might be, uh, you know, a DDoS attack, a distributed denial of service attack. There might be, uh, you know, some of your uh, AWS region or your server regions or VM regions can go down, right? And it, it may need to uh, change it to your DR or disaster recovery uh, thing. And there might be a lot of users uh, that can come, let's say for, a, you know, as an example, uh, in a Black Friday. There might be a lot of users can come into your uh, system and try to buy a lot of things. So the traffic would go high. So these are the real world events that can occur in a production environment. So what you are doing here is you are creating that uh, environment artificially in your production environment before the actual things is happening. And then uh, when you do this thing, actually this one is called the game day. I will explain that thing in a while. So after you uh, doing this uh, experiment, what you are trying to do is you are trying to disapprove the hypothesis that uh, you have been made earlier uh, by looking at the result. So these are the main three objectives in chaos engineering. Confirming uh, known knowns, testing known unknowns and most importantly finding unknown unknowns. So let us see how we can uh, achieve these things uh, by using uh, the scenario called game day. So this is the game day. So game day is uh, actually uh, simply speaking, the game day is the day that you are executing your chaos engineering. So these are the uh, objectives that we are trying to achieve in a given game day. How well this is uh, the altering system works. So that means that you are doing some alterations to the system or to its environment and uh, examine how well the systems, uh, your system is working. How team members react to incidents. So you do, uh, there are two ways of doing these incidents. I will explain that to you uh, in the next slide. Uh, so how well or the, how your team members are react to these uh, chaos engineering incidents. Whether are they capable enough or you are testing their abilities. Uh, how they uh, behave in, a, in an incident. An indication of system heads. So these are the monitorings that we are talking about. Are the monitoring systems are working properly? Or 
are the monetary systems uh, reflect the actual situation that is happening in the system, etc. And uh, how the support and DevOps teams react to the turbulence, how these you know technical teams are reacting to the turbulence and how they are trying to mitigate uh, the situation that is arising in the or that is uh, that had happened in the production environment. How the uh, dev teams are react to the turbulence. So you know in uh, for most of the uh, high turbulent incidents normally the final uh, rescue team would be the dev team and we are examining how they are uh, reacting to this turbulent condition in the production environment as well. So these are the objectives of the game day. So let's examine uh, how we can plan the game day. So as the first step, you need to pick up any hypothesis or the test scenario that you have defined earlier from the test backlog or the AOS uh, testing backlog. And then you have to pick the style. So this one is very important. There are two main styles that you can pick. First one is the informed and the other one is the dungeons and dragons. So the, in the informed style, what you are doing is you are telling your team, okay, we are going to have a chaos engineering test today and this is the place that we are going to uh, do it and this is the area that we are going to uh, test it out using our test cases. So, uh, so the, the whole team is informed, your DevOps teams, your uh, support teams, your dev team, everyone is informed and they know in this particular time, this particular uh, area is going to affect. The second option is called the dungeon and dragons. So in this way, you are not informing your teams that any particular uh, chaos test case is happening in the production. So the team would think that it is something that has happened for real in the production system and then you need to investigate how the teams and your other systems are behaving or reacting to this particular scenario. So normally, uh, I mean, we would recommend uh, someone to do the Dungeons and Dragons if you have formalized all the other things properly like you know monitoring and uh, redundancy systems and all. If the, all the uh, you know, backup systems are done properly then it's, go, it's better to go ahead with Dungeons and Dragons or else if you are a, a novice or a new to uh, this chaos uh, engineering it's always better to start with informed methods. And then as the next step, you have to decide who is participating and you know, uh, who would be uh, participating from your uh, support team, who would be, uh, who would uh, participating from your DevOps team, dev team and all that. And uh, it's better to participate uh, someone from the management team as well, then they would know uh, what's going on in a particular chaos test uh, game day. And the fourth step is you need to declare where it is happening. So we are in the sense that uh, we are, I mean, if it is a, a planned or informed uh, operation, then you should decide, okay, you, this whole team needs to gather into a war room and do it. Or else, and uh, apart from that, you need to define in which area of the system uh, that uh, this particular chaos engineering test would occur. And then you have to decide the duration as well, whether it is happening within uh, one day or whether uh, the, uh, the chaos experiment would uh, last only few hours and all that and then you need to design uh, decide the experiment as well so this is the, uh, this is an example of chaos experiment plan so uh, the uh, steady state hypothesis is that it's uh, as as according to this example the root url respond within 200 status code within one second and this is the method that you are going to uh, test this uh, using chaos engineering disconnect the db cluster from the network and test this and then the rollback is uh, reconnect the DB because it is better that you define the rollbacks as well. Uh, so then uh, the team would know, uh, you know, what to do if there's anything go, uh, going bad. And finally, you need to get the approval as well because this one is also very important because as I told you earlier, the management team should know that this particular test would happen. Otherwise, there might be, you know, unwanted uh, calls that are coming from uh, clients or they or the others might get panic. Are we applying uh, this chaos engineering practice only for technical teams? So the answer is no. Of course, of course we can apply uh, this principle uh, into non-technical teams as well. As an example, let's say uh, that uh, you know you have your BA team or business analyst team. So uh, 
in a given uh, week or in a given time period, all your uh, business analysts go on vacation. So then who would analyze if there is a sudden business case? So who would do the anal analysis? So like that, you can uh, and who would do the analysis and how uh, the analysis process would work. So likewise, you can apply this uh, principle or this particular principle into non-technical teams as well. And the next big question, can we do this manually? You know that all the most of the QA processing, uh, you know, even though that it is uh, automated QA process that, you know, I mean, people do execute these things uh, manually. Can we do the chaos engineering uh, testing manually? The answer is no. I mean, like it is like it is almost uh, impossible task. You know, it's like uh, that, that's the metaphor that I have taken here. It is not a possible. So we have a lot of tools for this. So the most famous one is the Netflix. The Netflix is Simeon Nami. So and apart, I will be explaining uh, this thing uh, to you in this uh, session. And apart from that, we have Rhythmus, Chaos Mesh, and Chaos Toolkit as well as the other tools. So let's uh, dig deep uh, into Netflix as Simeon Nami, and let's see what other tools that are there. When we go into tooling, uh, the first one that uh, we can find in the Netflix uh, Simeon Army Toolkit is the Chaos Monkey. So Chaos Monkey is a I, uh, IT infrastructure resilience tool invented by Netflix. So uh, it is intentionally disabling computers in a production network uh, and uh, test how the remaining uh, system or the uh, how the remaining uh, VMs are working. Actually, they have implemented this thing first uh, in AWS. So what it is doing is, it is uh, disabling or taking down uh, random EC2 containers or EC2 instances in the AWS infrastructure. And then uh, they are analyzing how the system would behave if they take down certain number of EC2 instances in their AWS uh, ecosystem. So the uh, second one, is the Chaos Kong. So Chaos Kong is more or less like a bigger version of uh, Chaos Monkey. So what is, it is doing is it is taking down the entire availability zone or a region in AWS and then analyze uh, what is going on or how that particular uh, instance or that particular scenario affecting to the system. And uh, the other one is the Latency Monkey. So what the Latency Monkey is doing is it is uh, creating uh, artificially, it is creating some latency or some uh, bottleneck in the communication channels to test out how to how the system behaves in a delayed uh, environment or the uh, environment which has high latency. The other tool is the confirmity monkey. So this one is uh, more or less like a rule based tool. So what it's doing is it is, uh, there are certain rules that are uh, defined uh, using the co confirmity monkey tool and uh, the tool when the tool runs it is trying to test the system against these tools so as an example uh, one rule might say for one particular service there are, uh, there should be uh, five instances up in any given time so the confirmity uh, monkey is doing is whether it is checking whether these uh, five uh, instances are up or not if it is not there, it is uh, sending an email notification. So this is just a simple example that I can give you about Confirmity Monkey. The Security Monkey is another uh, very important tool because you know that security uh, in any given system, security uh, should be given some high priority. So what the Security Monkey is doing is it is uh, randomly checking uh, the containers or the instances whether they have uh, meet uh, the defined security standard, compliances and all the other security uh, measurements that it needs to check. Uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, it is a very good tool to identify if there is a newly introduced security vulnerabilities in your ecosystem. Where can we uh, do this thing? I mean, is it advisable to do it in production or is it advisable to do it only in QA or free prod environment? So actually, the chaos engineering toolkits or the uh, chaos engineering principle is defined to do it in production because uh, that is where 
that you can test your actual behavior of your system as per the client or as per the user. So, but the problem is that you know you cannot take down your entire production environment in order to do chaos testing. So, what we can do is you can you need first of all you need to uh, reduce the blast radius. So, I have given an example here that uh, you know you need to uh, keep out your customers as much as possible. So, whatever the uh, chaos testing that you are doing, uh, it should have minimum impact to your customer and the high focus should be your production team, pilot team and QA process and all that. So, this is uh, I mean first of all you need to define uh, this uh, blast radius or the affecting areas uh, in each in uh, each and every of your uh, chaos engineering tests. Okay guys, so that is it uh, as an introduction to the chaos engineering. So, I am hoping to bring you another uh, bit more technical session how to use these tools and how to build a chaos engineering uh, toolkit to test your uh, environment.